dry ice cleaning. What is it? It's something you might have seen on Instagram or on the internet. It's a different way of cleaning a car. You've probably heard of steam cleaning. You've probably heard of uh, media blasting of some sort. But in this episode, I want to investigate what it's all about and when it's useful and maybe when it isn't. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. We're here at the Lost Socket in Warwick, um, a garage which Tom from Blasmith operates out of. Before I chat to Tom, I just wanted to say, if you've never seen my project Tokyo Taxi before, I'll put a link above my head of me introducing the car and how I came to own it. But this is all about this new process that's maybe not that new, but everyone seems to be talking about it and looking at it on, on, on Instagram and stuff. It's weirdly satisfying to watch time lapses yeah, of it yeah yeah definitely so what i wanted to ask you tom was like explain it to me and the viewers in kind of an idiot's way of understanding a layman term okay so <clears throat> the easiest way i would think to categorize it would be it fits somewhere in between a steam clean high chemical high temperature um high water volume you know yeah your stuff and a full rotisserie sort of restoration level. It's for the connoisseur that wants the vehicle immaculately clean, yep. but they're not ready at that stage to strip the car to bare bones and talk about doing other abrasive types yep. of blasting. It's important to note at this point that dry ice is not abrasive. It, ha it has a niche for um, removing under seals and things like that, um, but also creating and removing lots of, you know, in, in this case, sort of 20, 30 years of grime, dirt, road dirt, etc., etc., yep. without the risk of introducing high pressure steam or water, which can dry the bushes out, make them squeak, etc., etc. Right. Um, it's not going to damage any electrical components. It's not going to damage any rubber components. It doesn't remove um, paint? Won't remove paint. Okay, okay. If the surface is good, the paint is absolutely fine. Okay. If the surface is um, compromised yeah. via corrosion or other damage, um, then obviously with the blast pressures that you're working with, it can get under there yeah. and it can lift paint away if the adhesion is already compromised from the paint to, to the surface yeah. already. So I could buy, I mean, I'm, I'm using the taxi as a sort of guinea pig to demonstrate this today with a view to maybe doing some of my other cars. So I, was, I would say to you is, it would be a good idea to have a car dry ice blasted if you were going to do it with a view to cleaning it up and then maybe preserving it, which we're going to do actually at the end of this, with some sort of anti-corrosion potions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the fact you've not got any moisture introduced means that when we're finished today, we can protect it immediately. Yeah. Now, are you going to show me the machinery or is it a trade secret? We can see bits and bobs of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's something I've spent a lot of time researching and I, I chose to make the decision to well, bought, bought this kit basically because I wanted to be able to do most, if not all jobs that are presented to me. Yeah. Um, hence the massive compressor. I was going to say like the that. heart of this operation is outside. It's a, it's a huge compressor on a, on a trailer because yeah. this works at massively high pressure. Yeah. So the thing, the thing with it is not just the pressure, it's the sheer volume of air. Okay. So whilst you might have a paint shop compressor that can run at seven, eight bar, you may only have 20 cubic feet a minute, but my compressor's 10 bar, 200 cubic feet a minute. 200? 200, yeah. So, 10 bar. Yeah, so it's moving a lot of air, yeah. Now, uh, b before I let you crack on in, in real time, what I was gonna say is your background, you're a precision engineer by trade, aren't you? Yeah, so, um, time served Rolls-Royce apprentice and now working for another major uh, car OEM um, in, the, in the field of precision measurement so metrology so this is something so you obviously that believe in this do. yeah this is something that I've wanted to do I've seen it for a long time but managing people's expectation of what they see on social media and what we can achieve in the UK with vehicles that have spent lots of winters on our salted roads yeah 
has been some challenge has been a challenge and we'll, we'll have a chat about that um as we go on yeah i mean a jdm import like this one um will be a dream to do but the satisfaction of knowing it's done when we coat it later on today yeah you know it, it's you know that you couldn't have got it any cleaner in any other way yeah. to, to no detriment to the vehicle whatsoever yeah right let's crack on Just stop for a little bit of a break for your arms yeah. and your respiratory system, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It is amazing the way it's picked up on the bright work of the fasteners and the, um, the castings and the brake lines. Yeah. And it hasn't damaged the, um, any of the plastic brackets. No, that's it, yeah. So you can nine times out of 10 do a clean like this without any detrimental effect to anything on there. Yeah. And everything that's been uncovered here you know the grease nipples everything that's on the bottom of the vehicle now you can see yeah transmission pan for example i know it's amazing you know you can see that perfectly dry yeah no problems no leaks no no mist of oil yeah all the bolts are as new i was going to say i'm using the taxi that that i'm using for the purposes of this video is a particularly original really good survivor isn't it I mean oh it's, yeah it's it's absolutely stunning I knew it was a rock solid unmolested car save for the air suspension which which I put on on a previous video which I'll put a link above my head for uh, this car is is an exceptionally well looked after car but obviously if 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 I if you had done this and we identified areas that needed repair or rest restoration I can go and do them yeah so this is basically like a, it's the equivalent of high-end detailing on the outside but on the area that nobody normally pays any attention to yeah, that exactly. that gets it's at the coal face of all the dirt and the grime exactly yeah you know and i think most people if they've had any long-term ownership could honestly say they've never ever cleaned the bottom of the car yeah ever which is what i do regularly in winter yeah. especially and then it comes mot time and it, they end up condemned with rot yeah and you think well these things could be picked up earlier or in some way some methods perhaps even prevented you know yeah yeah and this is something that people are looking more to do now as vehicles accumulate and gain more value. Yeah. There's nothing better than looking under something and just it just absolutely dripping in originality. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's where my passion lies and that's why I like bringing this level of condition back for people. Yeah. I'm going to put the kettle on. He's going to put his mask back on and start firing more 80s music video stuff underneath. <laughs>
all the, all the original paint markings are retained. It's amazing. You know. Can you see this? So you've got the you've got a paint mark there. You've got a stamp on the on the diff there, and then on the was it back here on the back yeah, of the, yeah. the drum? There's factory there's factory markings and stuff. It hasn't eradicated all of that. Yeah, and people are really really keen on that because it just shows originality. Yeah. And it, it turns out that the inner wheel arches are white. So, and because this is obviously a white car, there's a lot of underbody which is white or just off white. Um, we should expose that and, 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 and also bring back a lot of the metal fastenings and fixings. We're here at the Lost Socket, a garage that you're friendly with. You're using one of their bays. Do you travel? Yeah, so <clears throat> my setup is primarily mobile, um, but I've been fortunate enough to work with these guys now since I started up uh, here in Warwick. So if anybody wants to travel to me, this is where the work happens um, yep. at the Lost Socket. Okay. And, um, you know, we've businesses started up around a similar time, so we've done but work for each other in that regard. So yep. the partnership works really well. So you get a mixture of people bringing their stuff here or you going to people? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, most, I think at the moment, um, especially with winter projects, people are asking more for a mobile service, yeah. which is understandable. Yeah. During the summer months, get quite a few more jobs locally. Yeah. Cost. It's the big question. We have to ask, what is the kind of, what is the cost for doing dry ice blasting? I think... There's a, there's a few variables. Uh, if it's a mobile job, obviously it has to incur the, the travel cost. Yeah. Um, if it's an underseal removal job, it's a lot more ice intense than something like we've done today. Okay, so the um, tar based black. Yeah, I mean, of... it's, it, will, it will typically take, you know, another f probably 50% more ice than it would to do a basic deep clean okay. to remove underseal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've done one job on a an 80s Porsche, which had got under seal on it. The car was white and it took me double what it would have normally taken. To get rid of it to all? To get rid of it all, yeah. So you do that thing where you kind of shock it rigid and then it just flakes off? Yeah, I mean, but in this case, the car had got two coats on the insides of the wheel arches. Um, it got a fresher coat, which was more, um, which was still like hadn't set, if you will. Yeah. And then a really, really old coating that had been put on. But you That's got it all off? It was new. Yeah, yeah, most of it's all new, yeah, yeah. It came, came all the way back, yeah. I'll give you the pictures of, of yeah. everything, yeah. Yeah, so. so tell me sort of ballpark costs then. Is it, is, it an, is it like an hourly rate or do you...? Typically I charge per job, like yeah. depending on what the job is. Yeah. And um, the current ice price for a chassis with underseal on it is going to be somewhere in the region of 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. Okay. Um, if it's like today, depending on how long it's taken and the ice that we're using, you know, you're going to be eight, eight, eight fifty. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, and that if someone brings a car here and it's literally just like a quick job, mm -hmm. then obviously I'm, it, we, we work something out. It's on a case by case basis, really. But as an absolute yeah. like sort of bracketed rough amount, yeah, yeah. that's kind of. What, kind of where it is. Who are your customers? Like what are the sort of like most popular kind of cars that you've been doing since you set up? Um, most popular by a country mile is Porsches. Really? Yeah, uh, 993s, 964s, 930s. Yeah. Um, I've done my second flat nose turbo last week. Wow. Um, so that was cool, 5,000 mile example. But a lot of specialists are coming to me because they want a more time efficient way of cleaning the car. I'm glad you said that because that's what I was thinking. On the one hand, you could look at it and go, it's, this is quite expensive. This is more expensive than it would be for me to steam clean and use you know, slightly caustic um, potions on the car. But I've, and I've been there and done it with degreasants and stuff. It can take days. Yeah, and that's where the people are looking at. So the private customers um, are, are typically like the connoisseur that wants the absolute best level of cleanliness for their vehicle without any detriment to the originality yeah and also without 
there's a very, very minimal level of disassembly. That, that's the other thing. You don't have to take anything apart. No. Because it doesn't harm anything. No, that's it, exactly. And then the other thing is you have um, the specialist companies, like we've just said, that are just looking for a time efficient way to remove things. Yeah. I mean, people are pulling cars out of the woodwork all over the country, as you well know. Yeah. And some of them are potentially valuable vehicles. So it's where about people are now trying to look into different methods that save them the most amount of time. Yeah. Now we're going to put the car back up on the ramp and we're going to actually rust protect it. So while it's in this state, it's in a perfect position. And this is one of the reasons why you might do this is because then you can, you, can, you can rust protect it the way you want to do it. A lot of people will do it DIY like I do. Uh, I'm going to do a similar method to what I've done before on a previous video with the Suzuki Jimny. Um, in a future episode, I will show you how people professionally do different ways of rust protecting, but that's not in this video. So we'll do that and then we'll do the engine bay. to think that kind of like solid pieces of carbon dioxide I've done that isn't yeah. it yeah it's really it's really odd but it's very impressive and hopefully we've tried to get it across on camera as accurately as possible I suspect that this car looks better in person than it does in the pictures but of course every car is different and this car's, you know, fundamentally white in a lot of the places and the underneath of it isn't a show car it's it's an original car with, with, you know, the soundproofing where it is and the stone chip and all that sort of thing. But it gives you an idea of the process. The engine bay is probably the coolest bit. Yeah. The way that the ancillaries have come up, I was just stood over your shoulder watching how quickly it was just stripping and attacking all that stuff. And when I say attack, not aggressively. No. And I was thinking if I was doing that with a toothbrush, degreasant. Yeah. Probably wouldn't. I don't like steam cleaning. Really, not engine, not bays, electrics no, and no, stuff. It's no. it's you, you can you can open up a can of worms there. Yeah. Just watching you do that in the time that it took you was remarkable. Yeah. I think engine bays are bang for buck. Really, one of the things that transforms because you've got so many different materials. Yeah. In such a short space. Yeah. You know, all your wire colours come back. All your plastic colours come back. Faded bottles and things like that will all clean back. Yeah. You Sorry. don't have to remove anything. No. You just went straight over all the ancillaries. Just I was turn, like, just turn the lids, turn the lids around where needed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, to get all sides, and, and that's really it. So there you go. It's kind of like to me, dry ice blasting is is going to do to this industry almost like what laser cutting has done. What laser cutting has done has made in intricate pieces. You can cut things out and do them so fast. It's revolutionized 
the way we do stuff and the way we engineer stuff it, it, and 3d printing it's sort of added to that list of like amazing things yeah you didn't realize that you you needed in your life yeah I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. Thanks very much to Tom at Blastsmith. Uh, thanks very much to the guys at The Lost Socket. I'll put the links in the description for those. Maybe you want to uh, become a patron of this channel. I will put a link to that in the description. Also, you get early access typically to episodes like this. I'm now going to drive this home and hopefully never get it dirty again.